Well, good evening, friends, or afternoon, or morning, whatever it is you're watching us, and whenever it is, we're so glad that you've joined us. I greet you in the love and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ with my buddy, Steve Autry. We're back. It's Wednesday, <laughs> and we're glad that you're here. We have concluded a, a, a long, what seems like a long a sermon series at Huntersville about lessons I've learned from people I've loved. And I've coerced my friend Steve today into helping me wrap this up. So, hey, Steve. Hey, how are you, Paul? I'm good, man. It's good how to you see you. It? I'm good. I'm so, good. Uh, we concluded this sermon series, Lessons I've Learned from People I've Loved, and I wanted to turn to Steve. And Steve, that whole idea uh, began with, uh, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses from Hebrews 12, let us lay aside every weight, every mm-hmm. sin that clings so close, and let's run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Uh, tell me some cloud of witnesses that you've had in your life that have impacted you well one one of the things just as a caveat to that is that cloud of witnesses extends it, it's beyond time and place mm. so there there are people we learn from that we've experienced personally uh, and then there are people we've we can learn from who we may have never met right and for me, there are a couple of people who are really important in my journey and in my faith development and in my ministry that I, I've never met these folks. And two, two of them, at least, or at least three I would name, are no longer living. Hmm. Um, one I would say would be Fred Craddock. I've uh, read his books on preaching. I, read many of his sermons, and he also has written many commentaries. And I know that's someone that's influential in both of our ministries, that he wouldn't, couldn't pick us up out of a crowd, could he? <laughs> no, he, he could not. He could never have known. Um, and so I, I think when you read someone, you get to know them. And part of what we believe, uh, and that one of the things that shapes us as United Methodists is this understanding of scripture, tradition, reason, and experience of how to kind of frame our understanding of life, how to how to interpret scripture, how to live out the Christian walk. And that tradition piece, those are voices that speak to us from the past. And we have to pay attention to those voices. And so, again, for me, Fred Craddock is an important vo- voice. Another one, would be Eugene Peterson, mm. uh, his writer of the Message translation that right. we often use in in uh, our worship at Huntersville because it is so impactful to read Scripture that way. And and more than that, I mean that's what he's best known for. But he's written many books on what he would call pastoral theology, mm. and his book Pastor. Uh, it's very important to me. Under the Unpredictable Plant is another one that I found that really helped me when I was pondering whether to go into ministry or not. What, how do I understand this call? Um, Five Smooth Stones for Spiritual Development, that's another one. So, um, And then his podcast, his just his writings. And, and he and Fred Craddock have both passed a, a little, they've they're dead now. They're yeah. in that cloud of witnesses, yeah. um, along with Dallas Willard. If you've watched this any length of time or you've heard me preach at Denver, you know that I refer to Dallas Willard quite often. His, I think his book, The Divine Conspiracy, is maybe the, the best modern version of what it means to understand the totality of Christian theology. It is kind of a modern-day mere Christianity. Mm. And oh, that's strong. So... Those are just a few names. How about you? Yeah, so I, I, some of the same ones that you mentioned. I, I, if I could preach uh, in any way to model someone, Fred Craddock would be the preacher who, who, whose preaching shapes my preaching, I think. And, and I, what I've always remarked at is he hardly ever raises his voice above a whisper. You always find yourself kind of leaning in to try and listen a little closer because he, he is not an overpowering voice. But through story and through just image, he has a remarkable capacity to help the gospel come alive. So Fred Craddock would be one for me. Who I'm reading a lot these days is a man named Richard Rohr. Richard Rohr is a Franciscan priest. Uh, You've probably heard us reference him before. He actually lives out in New Mexico. Um, He turns It turns out uh, we have, uh, I have my friend Jimmy, Jim Marsh, who it actually has become friends with Richard Rohr. He is that Franciscan priest, but he, uh, many, many people make a kind of a sojourn out to New Mexico to see him. 
I'm particularly reading a book right now. It's it's called From Wild Man to Wise Man. And and it is engaging me on so many different levels. It, it talks about uh, masculinity. What is masculinity in today's world? It, it talks about father wounds mm-hmm. and it talks about you know, the relationships that we're developing with those who coming behind us. So really spot on for so, me. So who wrote that one? Is that Richard, Richard Rohr? Rohr. Okay. Yeah, that's Richard Rohr. So I, I went to a funeral not long ago. My best friend since middle school, his, his mom died and went to his mom's funeral. And um, one of the family members said, do you remember this guy behind you? And it turns out his, his name was Mr. Ansel Baird. And uh, I had to go up and tell him, I said, look, your wife had more of an impact on my life than, than she ever probably knew and that you know. His wife, Nancy, was our uh, Sunday school teacher in 11th grade. And you can imagine a bunch of hoodlum 11th graders. We, we, were, we were talkative. We were, we were probably disrespectful. But she took all of that and she... Uh, engaged us. She allowed us to talk. It was not the Sunday school lesson that we often think about where people are sitting around a room talking about about a quarterly. She allowed us to really talk about what was on our hearts and minds and had a remarkable capacity to to relate that back to the good news of Jesus Christ, Mm -hmm. that she could relate that somehow. So I, I think about my cloud of witnesses, and it certainly wouldn't include people like Nancy Baird, who really have impacted my life. Jesus talks about that, um, the ability to teach us through the power of the Holy Spirit in the 13th, 14th chapter of the Gospel of John. What, what do you make of that, Steve? Well, he, he, he talks about the Holy Spirit on into the 16th chapter, too. In particular, I want, I want you to hear these words. This is um, John 16, verse 12 and following. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. Uh, and he also goes on to say, he will bring glory to me by taking from by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. Um, it's that kind of the understanding that uh, this, the spirit of God is what drives connection and drives the Spirit of God being pushed out to the world. And the primary venue for that message is us. So many times I think back to what Jesus was saying. He said, I've got a lot to say to you that you can't bear right now. If if somebody had tried to tell me at age 16, 17, 18, the lessons that I'm learning now, I wouldn't have been ready. No. There's no way. But they've set the stage and set the tone so that now, okay, I can go back and think, yeah, okay, now I'm ready to hear that. Hmm. And that understanding that we desperately need each other. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, that primary voice that we hear from is still Jesus' voice, practically through the words in the Gospels. Uh, That's that's the most concrete, perhaps, but there's also (laughs) the Spirit of Jesus that dwells within each of us that conveys the love, grace, and mercy of Jesus to one another. And that's something we, that's why we need each other. That's why we, we're not called to be Christian on our own. This is, the whole shooting match is meant to be um, a community effort. It's not meant to be a solo effort. I I think about my community, including my Aunt Sarah. I have a cousin, he's three weeks younger than I am, and we literally grew up together, same same school, same ball team, same after school stuff. And his mom, uh, who has had a profound impact on my life, just the simple fact that I always knew she was praying for us. I always knew that she was for us. And, and she wasn't shy about telling us how often that we were loved, how God was such a profound, you know, the, the, the presence of God was everywhere. Yeah. And she reminded us often, it was such an important part of that cloud of witnesses for me. And I just invite you tomorrow, we're going to turn to where we invite you to think more about what witness are you lending to others? I'm, I'm grateful that we could share a few of those that 
uh, have impacted us today, but tomorrow we'll move to that idea. What message would you want to be leaving with those around you? So that'll be, that'll be a good, good conversation right. for tomorrow. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much.